Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity. I hope you're all going to have an awesome day today and I hope it's a crafting one. Right, if you saw that image at the beginning of my video, now I haven't got nuts, that's my new art bin or shall I say my craft bin where I can put all my rubbish because what I used to have was just um, a regular kitchen bag, you know, one of the drawstring ones just hanging off the knob of my craft room door and every time I die cut and poke stuff out I just dump it into that and then once a week because I don't really get that much paper rubbish I try to use up every scrap and uh, I just tie it up and put it out with the garbage but when I was in Walmart I saw the pioneer woman bins and I thought that turquoise and kind of like red rosy one would look really nice in my craft room and of course I haven't finished organizing my craft room or even painting it yet but um, I got it anyway because when I got home and I had a look online, it was actually rolled back to under $20. And it's huge. It really is big. I think it's something like 10.5 gallons or something like that. So I um, ordered it offline because it was cheaper than in store. So anyway, it's a DIY art bin project share and I just thought I'd also show you my art bin, so no pun intended. Right, I will uh, cease to chatter now and just talk about DIY art bin. So I've done two little projects today and I have used Surprise Creation in out stitchy arch dies to help me because they're just a beautiful shape. I've used the poppy die that people asked me to show. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that this was a beginner die personally. Even though there's not that many bits, it's kind of like, it's one of those you can't really achieve the effect of it unless you use markers. Um, using cardstock isn't going to give you sort of like all the shading on the petals and whatnot. But if you're somebody that likes to have a go, and I do, then obviously you're going to enjoy that. And then the other one that everybody was asking for when I got the haul was the gingerbread man on his um, candy cane skates. And this mark that you see here that embosses into him is kind of like a drop shadow or the toasty section of the gingerbread man where he's baked in the oven for a little bit longer than he should have. So that's really, really sweet. I've also used some creative path ephemera today but first up the puppies isn't that cute i love that this is the creative path here and also here and that's just a an old piece of scrapbook paper that i use behind but I don't know if it's going to show true to colour. I chose this because it kind of matched in with the envelope, which is um, one of my Touch 5 markers. It's a bit of a mushroom colour. And I've also um, used my jewellery glaze. Now, a lot of people are saying they can't find this in Walmart. And what's interesting is you can't find it online either. So I'm wondering if Eileen hasn't, you know, changed the name of it or that it was really cheap because they were going to change the name on it. And they might have changed it to Mixed Media Glaze instead, which is actually $5 a bottle, whereas this was, I think it was two eighty five. But, um, you know, you do find in Walmart that you get a lot of the big brands who, when they're sort of like changing the cover on their marker paper pads and stuff like that, um, they're a lot cheaper than buying the updated cover of a book and stuff, if you know what I mean. Like chart pack marker paper pads you can find now in Walmart. And I think they're about 6 or $7 because, of course, marker paper is never really cheap. But um, I think normally it would sell for around 12 to $14. But Chart Pack have sort of like upgraded the front cover and it's a, a sort of like brighter red geometric, whereas the one in Walmart is kind of like a dull red. So make sure you look out for stuff like that because you can save huge amounts of money. But anyway, there's my little, my little drops of jewellery glaze in the middle of those poppies i'm trying to get in close here it's quite bright if you turn it like that you actually get the true sense of the color of it but i just think that it's really really pretty and now that i've made it i can measure it 
So grab my ruler and I did make it according to the website. So it's three and a quarter inches, which of course makes it perfect for a tag. And then I know how much is under there on this little I love you. So it's two and a half inches high, but just really lovely. Great to sort of say I love you, but also for Remembrance Sunday. Um, if you're somebody that celebrates that, or if you know anyone in the forces for Remembrance Day, that's uh, a great little element just to say, you know, thinking of you, you can stamp there and just put something really small but thoughtful in the mail to someone. So that's that one. Right, and next up is the gingerbread. Isn't he cute? Oh, just look at his face. And this is what I was telling you. You've got this this drop shadow all the way around that makes it easy to colour in and I've used my uh, white gel pen to go in the scarf areas just to highlight those a little bit of highlighter at the top of the scarf and the top of the hat and then I think the bobble was supposed to be white but I decided to do it in a sort of like paler shade of the blue with a little bit of warm grey dotted just up and down on it and that background uh, cardstock there is from one of my free downloadables again as I was saying yesterday you know when you can find them um, just download them save them to USB and uh, you'll be surprised sort of like in a couple of years time how many you got on there and what all sorts of exciting things you might find um, I also used a little bit of white gel pen there just on the tips of the candy cane to highlight that. And that is the uh, Creative Path Ephemera, the December up there in pink. But I just think it's really, really sweet. Turning it out of the light there. Just really cute. And he's got his little, his little doodah bits. What are those called? Rick Rack. That's it. That's his Rick Rack. Just really, really cute. Love it. Right, so, measurements. See, I almost forgot. That's me, I just talk too much. Right, we are at three and three quarter inches because I did move the bobble of his hat down um, a little bit more, I think, than I should have done. And I'm going to say it is... Ooh, let's get that over to the edge of the hat. I'm going to say it's two and three quarters because I did tuck the skates up under the foot a little bit further as well. But just really, really cute. What a great expression. I'd love to be able to do that in clay. And um, when you've got a die like this, you can. So if you like sort of um, air dry clay and stuff like that, I'll tell you how to do it. <laughs> You get your rolling pin and you use those depth bands or elastic bands either end of your small roller so that you're rolling out at the same depth every single time. And then you'll get a piece of um, saran wrap or cling film. You'll put that down over your paper clay or your FIMO and then you use your die and then you press quite firmly into it. And then you lift up the die, pull it back, and you'll have it cut out of your clay. And it will have lovely, smooth, rounded edges because you use the um, the cling film or the plastic wrap. So that's how you do that. And then, of course, you go in with your paint markers and you can make yourself a little ornament. But it's just nice to be able to do with things like this. And when they're whole pieces, uh, you can do just that. So there's another little suggestion. Make a cute little ornament for the tree. Right, I do thank you so much for watching. Have an absolutely awesome day. Once again, I don't have a clue what I'm going to do tomorrow, so you'll just have to come back. <laughs> and as usual, all links below. Bye.